our society is biased. I really like computer games. For the woman, it doesn't matter that she has a child, she's going to commit the crime anyways. Well, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Tina Elyasi Rod. I'm a professor of computer science and network science at Northeastern University, which is in Boston. And um, I work at the intersection of machine learning, data mining, often known as data science, and what's called network science, which is I'm observing some phenomena and I want to model it as a complex network. For example, Facebook, you can look at friends between Facebook and that's a social network, a network of friends. And then you want to know how uh, people become friends, why do some friendships break, why is it that some people are closer to each other than others, and so on and so forth. Well, uh, my dad has a PhD in electrical engineering and he worked on autonomous vehicles way back in the 1970s, so about control theory and having vehicles that can drive themselves. Yes, way back then, even though the computers weren't fast enough. So in our house, we got a lot of magazines like IEEE Computer, ACM Communications, um, and so I was introduced to those from very early on. And then I also found myself be very, being very good at math. So I liked math because I was good at it. Pick what you're good at. I was good at math, and I liked what I saw in these magazines, and uh, I decided to do computer science because computer science marries engineering and math. And so you have actually a product. It's not just I have a theorem and I have a proof, but you actually have a product that you could show to people. You have an algorithm that you code it up. So an algorithm is just a procedure. Something comes in, something goes out, there's a box that um, does whatever you want it to do. Um, and so that's how I picked computer science. And I knew I wanted to do computer science from very early on, from when I was a teenager. Um, part of it was also I really liked computer games. <laughs> so that was also another part of it. I have many different projects right now. Uh, one of the projects I have is about ethics of AI. So ethics of AI um, is a very big area that covers many things. Um, and my specific focus on it is about uh, when you have a lot of data, how can you make sure that you're treating people fairly in that data set? So suppose that uh, your task is to predict whether somebody would default on a loan. You need to buy a car, you want to go and get some loan, and you happen to be from a minority group. Maybe they won't give you a loan just because you're from the minority group. Our society is biased. So how do we actually quantify what are the biases in our society and try to remove that from the data that's being used to make human decisions about whether you should get a loan or about whether you're going to commit a crime, how likely is it for you to commit a crime in the next month, what kind of crime are you going to commit. So that's one of the projects uh, that I'm working on, which is very interesting because it uh, makes me talk to philosophers, uh, to lawyers, to criminologists, to um, uh, judges, and policymakers. So one of the um, aspects of this problem, which is interesting, is, for example, for female, uh, if uh, they have uh, no child, and then they have a child, the likelihood of them committing a crime goes very down between no child and one child. But from one child to two and then three, it doesn't go down as much, right? And this kind of makes sense to us because um, if for the woman, it doesn't matter that she has a child, she's going to commit the crime anyways, then from one to two to three children, it shouldn't matter. So I'm sure you've heard this advice, but the advice is do what you love and do what you are good at. Usually people love what they're good at. Um, so um, build on your strengths. So if your strength is in writing and talking, um, then pick a career that involves a lot of writing and talking, maybe journalism. 
right? If your strength is in solving theorems, then maybe you want to be a mathematician. So uh, follow your strengths and also pay attention to what is happening in society. Um, so for example, when I started in machine learning and data mining, uh, we, the community wasn't this big. Um, when I took my machine learning class, there were only 15 people in the class. Now, when I teach it, there are 200, 300 people in the class, depending on the semester. Um, but I took it because I loved it. I loved the topic area. Um, but as you look around, for example, you see that data is now everywhere and people are using data to make predictions. So knowing about probability, knowing about linear algebra, knowing about statistics is a good um, topic areas to know, even if you're not going to data science. Um, other um, uh, courses that are important to know are, for example, critical thinking or logic. To know when somebody, for example, is trying to con you and you can argue why um, uh, you think that the person is trying to con you. So one particular example of this is um, I tell you a story about Julia, and I tell you Julia was a bank teller uh, in America, and she was very active uh, with the with certain kind of protests, like a nuclear disarmament protests. And then I tell you, is it more likely that Julia is a feminist bank teller or a bank teller? Now, most people say that it's more likely for Julia to be a feminist bank teller, but that clearly can't be. The number of people who are bank tellers is a lot more than the number of people who are female or feminist bank teller. So if you know critical thinking and you know logic, you can uh, um, guess this question and other problems that arise in real life better and you can navigate better and you can rationalize better.